Welcome into episode 193 of the Sources Say podcast, your go to Kentucky basketball and recruiting podcast on the growing KSR podcast network. The Sources Say podcast is presented by our good friends at Justice Dental. You can make an appointment at one of two Lexington locations that's on Wellington Way and Blazer Parkway. Now is a great time to schedule your dental cleaning. Remember that regular dental appointments are important for your overall health. You can learn more and make an appointment at justicedental.com. Dr. Justice and Dr. Thompson look forward to seeing you soon. I am your host, Jack Pilgrim of Kentucky Sports Radio. Very happy to be joined by a very special guest, Kentucky forward Jacob Toppin. Jacob, what's going on, brother? How uh, have you been? I've been solid. Uh, Just been working in this offseason, keeping my head down and getting better. It's obviously a busy time for you guys as the players' first satellite camps are taking place around Kentucky. Uh, We have a bunch of different info on that. Let me pull that up real quick. We got London on July 22nd, Georgetown July 28th, Lexington August 28th. You can uh, register for that at playersfirstcamps.com. And then you've also got the Players First Fantasy Experience coming August 26th to the 28th at Rupp Arena. Uh, You can register for that as well, playersfirstfantasyexperience.com. Participate as a player or coach alongside the current men's basketball team as you receive a first-class experience in the life of a student athlete between the basketball activities, nightly social functions, and unprecedented access to the team. This weekend is a slam dunk for any Hoops fan. As a participant, you receive a limited edition T-shirt, souvenir autograph, and a team photo with the players, current players from Kentucky will serve as the coaches for that weekend. Jacob, I don't know if you know this, but I participated last summer and uh, I went for 20 and 10 at Rupp (laughs) Arena, so nobody can ever tell me anything ever again. I had a blast with it. I absolutely love doing it. How excited are are you for both the fantasy camp, uh, fantasy experience, and then the satellite camps as well? I'm really excited. Uh, Last year, it was was a blast. It was so fun uh, getting to meet um, all these new faces and just interacting and building relationships. It was definitely a fun experience, not just for me, but like for the whole team. And I'm really excited for this this year because there's going to be a lot more to it. Um, I'm excited to meet new people and build uh, new relationships. Now, I led my team to the championship of the event. Uh, you know, we're not going to talk about final stats for me in that, that championship game, but I have a, a title crown. Are you prepared to, A, draft me to your team this year, and B, to uh, win, win a title this time around? Because I know you're a little bit jealous that, that I took home the hardware this, that last, last summer. I'm, I'm going to do my scouting, see who I'm going to pick up. Uh, no, it's no fair, fair game. I'm going to pick up who I think is going to win. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I, I believe I'm going to bring, bring a team together who's going to win the whole thing. So we're going to see. We'll see about that. If you don't choose me, I'm just letting you know I'm going to use that as a chip on my shoulder and specifically come at you for that reason. So I, I just hope that you are mentally and, and physically prepared for uh, the, the the reaction that I'm going to have as a result of that. Uh, now, we are seeing uh, all kinds of NIL events around sports. You guys are choosing to do a lot in the community and with the local kids. Uh, did you attend ki- camps as a kid and, and have any older players made an impact on you the same way that you're hoping that you you can with these campers and, and with the uh, Players First Fantasy experience? Honestly, um, I didn't go to a lot of camps as a kid. Uh, I probably went to like one or two. But uh, – the only person I really looked up to when I was um, either going to camp or like playing basketball was my older brother because he was he was always there. Uh, we always uh, played and practiced against each other and we always competed against each other. And I always wanted to be better than him. So he definitely motivated me um, in many ways. And yeah, I definitely looked up to my brother. You know, with, with NIL, uh, this is all coming together thanks to two local corporations in the Kentucky area, Delta Dental, and Kentucky Farm Bureau, just what does that mean to you just with NIL, you know, kind of being able to, to use these local platforms to kind of do th- cool things like uh, Players First Fantasy Experience and then these satellite camps as well? It means everything because well, without them, uh, none of this would be possible. So we thank them uh, for, for doing this and uh, we appreciate it a lot. Now, shifting gears a little bit, getting back to your game and the team, uh, just what's been the vibe around the team right now, you know, with the practice facilities and the lodge? I just, you know, last year there was a lot of excitement and, and that was, you could kind of see that just being around the team. Just what is that uh, this time around coming back for, uh, I guess, year three for you? 
Uh, I think we're going to, well, right now, I know that we have a really good uh, team off the court. Uh, we all get along. Uh, we have a lot of characters who like to joke around, have fun. But we all know, like, when we step on the court, we're there to get better because we're pushing for uh, number nine. Everyone knows it. So uh, we're definitely, like, have a, we have a great group um, who's locked in um, and ready for the challenge that's up ahead. Who, who is the funniest player on the team or at least the biggest jokester or somebody that play, plays the best pranks on everybody else? Um, other than me, I would say Kaysen's kind of funny. Kaysen, Kaysen's a jokester. Uh, Antonio, he, he's funny too. You guys also have the Bahamas tour coming up in August. Just how excited are you for that? Uh, you know, get to get some fun in the sun, get to, you know, be in the pool, splash around, have a good time with, with your teammates, but also kind of prove, you know, yourselves on the court again. You get some some high-end competition down there against some professional teams. Just how excited are you guys for that whole experience? Like you said, uh, we're going to the Bahamas. So, like, obviously, um, we got to soak that all in because not a lot of people get the opportunity to go out of the country and travel. So, that's definitely um, good for us. Uh, but other than that, like it's it's a business trip. So we got to take it um, all in, lock in. And it's good for us because we get an opportunity to do something before the season that's going to help us mesh together. And um, hopefully it'll help us get ready um, for the season, for the start of the season and help us become whole and connected earlier than we usually do. You know, you talked about you guys have something to prove this year, got that confidence. Which is, what is that confidence right now, and what are you guys looking to prove going into this year? Uh, right now, um, our team is filled with a lot of confidence. Everyone is in the gym working and trying to perfect their craft. And when we get on the court together, we're all trying to um, find relationships on the court, um, build, build that connection. Um, and that's what we're doing right now. We're all confident, the sky – the sky's the limit. And uh, I believe if we just keep that confidence rolling, um, if we just cancel out the outside noise and worry about what we need to do to win big and win number nine, I think we can do it. This is obviously a different Kentucky team than usual. You got six returnees this year, reigning national player of the year in Oscar Shibwe, Bob Cousy award finalist, Sabri Wheeler. You get, you, you know, you're coming back just, uh, you know, I guess what is the the continuity there? Like, how do you think that helps the team, you know, bringing back so many different valuable pieces, running back for another uh, shot at the title? It helps a lot because we have a lot of experience, but don't get me wrong. The freshmen, uh, they're, they have a great mind. Um, they're not regular freshmen. Uh, Kaysen, Chris, they're great players. Adu's great player. Um, and they have a good mindset coming in. Uh, they're ready to work. They're taking feedback and they're um, getting better off of that feedback. So we definitely have a great group of uh, guys who's um, buying in and ready for uh, challenges that's up ahead. You, you being in year three now, who are you kind of looking at at this stage that has kind of separated themselves early that maybe some of the new faces or uh, even some returners from last year that you kind of looked at and gone, okay, there's a clear jump there that we didn't see last year, or maybe a surprise from one of the newcomers that, you know, that maybe they're showing something that, that you weren't necessarily even anticipating on your end. Antonio Reeves, he could shoot lights out. Um, he, he could shoot like very well and uh that definitely surprised me I didn't think he could shoot that well but he did score what like 1600 points in his college career so he's he's definitely a scorer and uh that's definitely surprised me um Kaysen has surprised me um he's really good uh not just offensively but on the defensive end he's gonna definitely be a disruption but uh someone that really stands out to me is probably Chris he lives in the gym uh he's always in the gym um, get enough shots on the gun, um, working out with somebody. He's always trying to get better. And even in practice, he's always asking questions, trying to understand things so he could um, not fall back on the train. So he's definitely someone who surprised me uh, the most. Now, I'm not going to lie. You know, some whispers and some birdies have told me that you were actually uh, the biggest name that when I asked the questions about, you know, who who's standing out in practice early, who are some guys that, that have kind of separated themselves early. They said that you have been one of the early uh, guys to keep a very close eye on that you're, you know, kind of on the cusp of making a pretty serious jump. What do you think that's a product of uh, on your end that, that people are looking at you the same way that you're kind of looking at guys like Antonio and Chris and Kaysen? I mean, um, like I said before, uh, I'm really not worried about any outside noise. Um, it's all poison. 
but it's just me um, keeping my head down. I've been in the gym, living in the gym, working out how many ever times that I need um, to build that confidence and just consistency is key. So if I'm consistent in the gym, working on my craft, getting better, whether it's shooting, dribbling, playing defense, whatever it is, um, I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna get better. So I've been doing that since the season ended and my confidence is through the roof right now. So I'm excited to see what I can do on the court. No, this offseason was a big one for you individually. You had a choice to make. You worked out for some NBA teams. You got to thoroughly explore that pro route. Just what was that process like for you? What was the feedback that you got back from teams that uh, are you're kind of using as that motivation going into this, this next season? It was a great opportunity for me. Um, I'm blessed. I'm thankful because without God, I definitely wouldn't be in this position. Um, it, was, it was definitely an opportunity that I didn't take lightly. Um, all the feedback that I got, I took it and ran with it. Um, whoever gave me feedback, um, I took it and it's helped me. Um, I think I've gotten better in many aspects of my game, but I can. I have so much more to get uh, give. So um, it was a great opportunity to do all that. Um, but now I'm back trying to better my craft so I can make it to that next level. What, what do they see you being in the future? Like, what was that feedback when they said, if you do this, you know, was it like, if you do this and you're going to be this, you know, lottery pick, like what, what was that individual feedback that you got that uh, you're kind of using as the goals going into this year? I mean, it's no secret. Obviously I need to get more consistent with the outside shot. I need to be able to uh, stretch the floor at the four position, uh, play some three because uh, a lot of teams want me playing, um, multiple positions where I could guard multiple positions as well. So that's definitely um, feedback that I got. I've gotten feedback where like I need to get uh, bigger and stronger, which I have been. Uh, so I definitely um, took all that feedback and used it to get better. It's no secret that your role is kind of carved out key on transfers and, and now the four position is kind of yours. What are you kind of hoping to prove with that new opportunity and, and the, the expanded role that you're clearly going to have? I mean, we can say that, but let's not get ahead because obviously like no position is guaranteed. Um, I'm gonna continue to work and everybody on this team is gonna, gonna continue to work. And whoever gets that spot gets that spot. I just know that I'm gonna work um, and do whatever I need to help my team win. Um, whether that's starting, whether that's coming off the bench, whatever it is, but there's an opportunity. Um, I'm gonna go grab it, but there's gonna be people on the team that is gonna try to grab it too. So. Again, like this is a family, but like we're all fighting for positions and we're all fighting to win. And that's what we're going to do. If you were to look back to, say, nine, 10 year old Jacob Toppin and just kind of looking at your basketball career that you've had and the journey that you've had to get there, just what advice would you give to, to nine, 10 year old Jacob Toppin about just kind of what was to come and and, you know, the mindset to, to kind of carry with him moving forward? Uh, what would I tell myself? Yeah. Um, Honestly, I would tell myself, like, there's a lot of ups and downs in life. Uh, don't get too high. Don't get too low. Just stay level. Um, and that's really it. Just go with the flow. Keep your head down. Grind. Um, and listen to people. Accept, uh, accept whatever is to come. And just take it all in and just grow from it. Now, it, it, kind of different question going down a different path here. What is something that nobody knows about you individually, what you do in your free time, like a weird hobby or habit that you have, uh, something that you're maybe good at that maybe somebody wouldn't expect from you? Just what, what is a kind of a, a weird thing about Jacob Toppin that nobody knows? A weird thing about me? Um, honestly, like to the public, like everyone would see me as a person who um, is like very talkative and like, um, can talk to anybody but like realistically like when i'm like alone that's when i feel best so like when i'm alone i'm usually like in my room either playing video games i'm a game head so i love playing video games or like i'm either if i'm not playing video games i'm watching netflix so like that's really what i do on my free time like i don't really do a lot because honestly like i'm usually in the gym and if i'm not in the gym i'm usually tired so i either play the game or watch netflix what games you playing and what are you watching on netflix I play uh, Fortnite. Uh, there's this thing, Fall Guys, that I play, but I play Warzone. I play GTA. Um, and on Netflix, the best Netflix series ever is uh, The Blacklist. I suggest you watch it. It's the best series ever. But I finished that, so now I'm trying to finish Stranger Things. 
That's like that's what everybody's watching right now. I haven't gotten a chance to watch a new season, but I'm I'm gonna I'm make my way around to it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, favorite art music artist right now, and your favorite music artist of all time. My favorite music artist right now is probably Lil Durk. My favorite music artist of all time, I'd probably say Drake. Who is a music artist that you like that nobody, that you would be shocked, that other people would be shocked to know that you, A, know who they are, B, that you enjoy singing to them in the shower or, you know, where, by yourself, whatever you do? See, I listen to a lot of music. So, like, there's a lot of people that I listen to, but, like, one that, like, would be shocking would probably be, um, probably, uh, shoot, I don't even know. There's a lot. I listen to a lot of old school R&B. Um, we're probably, I would just stick with like, probably like Bozzy. Like nobody listens to Bozzy. Uh, but yeah, I listen to Bozzy a lot. I, I feel like you have like a, like a Taylor Swift, like is there, there's, there's somebody. I, mean, I, I would listen to Taylor Swift. I would listen to Ariana Grande. I would listen to anyone. Like I have such a like wide variety of music tastes. Like it doesn't, I listen to everything except for rock. I can't stand rock. <laughs> so, uh, being in Kentucky, you listen to, to country a little bit? Yeah, I listen to country a little bit, but like, I don't really listen. I mean, I don't go out my way to listen to it, but like if there's a good country song, I'll listen to it. <laughs> uh, favorite restaurant in Lexington? Oh, Jeff Ruby's hands down. Well, Carson's, your- Carson's is a big second because right. Carson's ribs are fire. What is your favorite meal, like just on a day to day thing, and like like date night meal? Like what you what, like if you if you were going to go on a date night with a, with a girl, what meal are you getting there? And then what's like just your casual uh, random lunchtime meal? My casual meal, uh, I get Panda Express a lot. I love Panda Express. I get lo mein, white rice, some uh, Bayesian beef, and some uh, some honey sesame chicken breast. It's fine. But if I was to go on a date with somebody, we're talking about Jeff Ruby's. That's expensive, yo. <laughs> oh, nah. All right. If I'm taking somebody on a date to Jeff Ruby's, I'm definitely getting a New York strip with a lobster tail, some mashed potatoes on the side. Oh, goodness. Uh, best pickup line to get the girl that you're taking on the date to go to Jeff Ruby's. Oh, boy. See, I don't really use pickup lines. I'm not, I'm not like a guy to use pickup lines. I'm a guy to like start a conversation and have a conversation and just like flow into like another conversation type. I don't really have pickup lines. I just, hi, how are you? What's your name? Blah, blah, blah. Where are you from? And just get into a conversation. And usually they like the conversation. So it usually works. Hmm. All right. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, how how tired are you of answering questions about your brother, Obi? Uh, to be honest, um, it happens so much that like I, I just don't care anymore. I don't get tired of it. It's my brother. He's a part of my life. So like if people have questions about him, I'll just answer them. Did, did you like with the, the dunk contest this past year that when he was doing well, that everybody was just saying that's Jacob Toppin's brother for a change? Like, did, did you like that that kind of narrative getting flipped just a little bit? It's cool uh, to see, like, a lot of people support me uh, in a different way and not saying I'm Obi's little brother. It was definitely a cool, cool thing to see. All right, let's get you out of here. Uh, one final message to Big Blue Nation about this season, about kind of Flipping the narrative, get moving past St. Peter's. Let's move. Let's move on from that. Forget that. What's your your message going into this year? Going into the Bahamas? Going into the season? About who you are going to be individually and what this team is going to be? Let's not live in the past. Let's forget about what happened in the past. I truly believe this team is very special, and I believe we're gonna um, do a lot of great things this season. Uh, there's gonna be highs, but there's also gonna be lows. So stick with us and just ride ride the wave um, until the end. Uh, we have a great group on and off the court, and I truly believe that this team is going to be very special. Jacob Toppin, man, appreciate you coming on. as another awesome, awesome uh, show. Appreciate you and uh, look forward to, to seeing you at the Players First Fantasy Experience. I'm ready to uh, – hopefully you draft me, but if not, man, I, I'm coming for your neck, I promise you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me.